Dortmund. Delighted to have the former Irish international Maeve de Burka in studio with us this morning. Morning, Maeve. Morning. How are you doing? Keeping well. Thanks for popping in. I think it's your your first time in studio with us. It is indeed. Yeah. First time in. Tuned in from South America the last time. I think. So. It's right. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Bit of a <laughs> I different forgot vibe. you were in South America the last <laughs> yeah. time we talked to you. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly That's different funny. environment for this one. Indeed. Um, obviously, we're all excited for this game tonight. As I said, we have live commentary, but all, all the papers. It's hard to ignore it this morning. Uh, out to get me. Vera Powell says the allegations made against her are down to an agenda by one person who is quote trying to destroy my career like, all the, the papers I guess this morning have similar enough headlines it's um, it's it's timing that I guess the Irish team could have done without but I guess they can't control the timing this piece came out on Monday in The Athletic and uh, it is what it is but certainly tense enough press conference yesterday yeah for sure you could feel the kind of pressure I think that they were feeling with the questions being popped at them and like you said it's far from ideal time and you know on the eve of what should be a which will be a great celebration I think um, tonight in Tala but it just does kind of cast a little bit of an unfortunate shadow over the whole thing especially when they're putting Katie McCabe I suppose out she has to as captain give her give her own view but Katie I thought spoke spoke well she of course said you know I can't speak for all of the players yeah. um, which is fair enough she's the captain but but I feel like she she maybe shouldn't and can't can speak for every single player in that team but I mean it, it remains to be seen we of course none of us know what, what, what's going on here in terms of the, the full truth as to what happened at, at Houston Dash um, but it's just one of those issues that timing wise could have been yeah better. exactly and I think it was kind of tough for Katie because when you're sitting beside the person you're, you're asked questions about you know it's very difficult and uh, with the cameras on you and everything what else was she going to say you know in fairness we don't know like you said we don't know what happened but uh, I think it was a very difficult situation and almost an uncomfortable watch for those people watching I just think that just um, the lack of transparency really is, is what the problem is and the kind of just the lack of due diligence obviously some people say the allegations aren't that um, you know important or that but you know at the same time you just need to I think make sure that the player welfare is, is put to the fore and um, yeah just the lack of transparency and inconsistency is I suppose the big issue there really within yeah and certainly to make sure the FAI investigated properly regardless of what the allegations are how serious people people see them to be were there are many other questions Kathleen yesterday about the about the football was it like was, what percentage was it in terms it, of there were three questions in half an hour about the football and I asked two of them right jeez yeah that <laughs> well because I was just like it got to the kind of the way these things work is like you have a live section and then you have stuff that's embargoed for the yeah. papers in the morning and it was kind of getting to the end of the live section and I was like curious as to the team that's going to play tonight you know <laughs> how close is it going to be to what we might see in Sydney and like I said earlier obviously you know these questions have to be asked but I just felt like they had been asked mm. quite a lot already at that stage and there was no point hammer I didn't think a different answer was going to come and it, mm. I was right like a different answer didn't come but um, yeah no I'd say in a half an hour of talking there were exactly three questions about the football right let's see can, that's I guess where Katie McCabe's little throwaway line at the end came from thanks for asking about the World Cup or yeah well like you could understand her frustration as well like if you're a player and yeah. Like they've worked so hard to get here and mm. they have done fantastically well so um, you know hopefully I suppose it's one of those that it just needs to be talked about in this moment but and hopefully like we said it, it is dealt with but mm. perhaps the timing right now is, is more so that I think there will be a bit more of a focus on the football hopefully yeah because that's the thing I asked a couple of the players about it over the last few weeks because obviously there's been so much in that the preliminary squad was announced and then you had the players in the preliminary squad who were maybe on the edge were trying to get in but also still doing all this media and build up to the World Cup then the squad was announced and there was all the hype and emotion around that and then there's been so many events in the last week or so you know they were in Farmley the other night when this article was it was the day after the article was released and you know they're getting pictures of the Taoiseach and the Tasha and the sports minister so you're already dealing with all the emotion and build up t with that yeah. and then you add this on top of it mm. as well like I don't know how when you're a player and you're dealing with like a tense situation how easy is it to whatever it might be just kind of I suppose take yourself out of that and focus on what's happening That's on the, the pitch thing. It, I think it would take a lot of adapt adaptation because they're not used to all this media attention which is fantastic uh, external noise I suppose as Katie referenced it yesterday but um, you know I'm, I'm sure they will be glad just to nearly get into a little bubble almost over in Australia and just focus on the football obviously they still have me media duties and stuff but I don't think it'll be on the same level of intensity 
intensity as it has that they've experienced like you said even with that training camp which can be which they all came out I suppose at the time they said it wasn't too bad but then it was later emerged it was the most intense kind of two weeks of camp ever so um, yeah I think they'll just be happy like I said just to get in and, and just focus on the football and I'm sure tonight in Tala that's what they'll be doing as well so that, that is kind of the way these things work like there's a, a maybe a media storm over an issue like this uh, or allegations like this and, and the players themselves you'd like to think a lot of the players aren't reading newspapers aren't listening to media coverage at all especially now in advance of the World Cup I guess they don't need that um, but then of course something like this pops up and FAI press people and media uh, people have to basically warn the players and tell them look if, if you're asked about it this is what you should say that's just the way the media works um, it's, it's of course a side of it that these footballers never signed up for you know, they're yeah. not signed up to be PR people or to mm. uh, answer questions necessarily at all you know they're there to play football but it's just a side of the of the game that they have to be prepared for especially in advance of the World Cup as you say this is because th- this Irish team are getting so much coverage rightly now because they've qualified for mm. a first World Cup mm-hmm. uh, and this is the, the byproduct of it the byside of it I guess that they have to deal with they yeah. are also all incredibly well spoken because they've had to spend so much time mm. putting themselves forward and you know advocating for themselves and saying look at us give us the coverage yeah. talk about our football like as well as they play on the pitch they're also all quite good speakers but I suppose this is sort of the situation you never expect to have to answer questions about and they're probably thinking even you know because obviously this is what two weeks before the first World Cup game mm. and, and we're talking about the likes of this but even after the, the Scotland game you know the greatest night of their lives then of course there's the song in the dressing room and all, yeah. the, all the madness that came out of that so they must be thinking Can, we can't we can't, can't enjoy break. anything like, <laughs> yeah. can't. so they're used to off pitch matters being the topic uh, of discussion now I guess so it's yeah. probably good practice for them in some ways you know because these things do crop up yeah and if anything was you know to happen within the World Cup situation as well I suppose they're definitely going to be the most equipped team nearly to deal with it but you can see they're not the only ones you know a lot of the teams going into the World Cup now have little kind of shadows I suppose um, hanging over them for various different reasons and um, yeah but like I said that's the nature now of the women's game this wasn't the case uh, you know eight years ago like maybe four years ago there were a little bit more but now that just comes with the increased media coverage and um, it's part and parcel of it really I suppose for them of course the, the, the game itself then tonight Maeve and obviously in, in, in one way you think you know maybe nice handy 4-0 friendly win over some smaller nation might be perfect heading into a World Cup as it is it's the, the fifth best team in the world according to the rankings France um, but this has kind of been consistent with Vera Pau over the last couple of years she's, she's always aimed for a bigger opposition I guess yeah she has in fairness and I think it'll be a really really good test for them tonight because it's going to be um, better than the calibre of the opposition they're going to face in the group ga- games at least her hoping in advance that they, it won't be just three games they're playing so um, yeah I think you know France are a really strong powerful like physical team they're great attack and defend and everything they're really I think nearly a complete team and now they're you know Reynard is after coming in so it'll be interesting to see you know a manager coming in four months before a tournament starts how, what he can implement but I, I think by all accounts like he's a proven winner so I think it should be an interesting one they're, they're quick on the flanks France as well by all accounts like have a lot of pace like, are they are they similar in any way to teams we might face in the group like Canada Australia I guess coming up against uh, some of those French forwards might prepare you a little bit for Sam Kerr but yeah. there are maybe similarities that, that Pau has, has I guess there's reasons why Vera Pau has picked France in particular definitely yeah I mean even there when you talk about the pace I nearly get flashbacks of the last time we played them and they're just running over the top all the time chasing turning their backs and chasing so um, but I don't think I think you know Ireland will sit in so that you know that maybe that kind of strength of, of France they, they won't be able to exploit it as much but for sure they're they're really powerful they're really um fast and quick and yeah they've they, like um, they've La Summer like Ireland or sorry France's top um, leading goal scorer mm. up front she's recently come back into the squad um, I would have played against her multiple times under 19 and senior level and Henri as well um, Amandi and Henri is back as well so I think yeah, they're really like their attacking force is something to be what um, do they like to yeah. play against they were <laughs> she, uh, I would say if I was watching it it would have been a nice game to watch but uh, <laughs> when you're in the mix and uh, you know with the third goal goes in and then the fourth goal then you know it's um, always a bit of a daunting task yeah. but um, definitely I think um, yeah I think they're one of the teams I think I would pick nearly as favourites um, for the tournament even though they're they're not uh, ranked as, as favourites or that but I think if they kind of if things click for them 
I think they could be really um, really good and um, yeah it's just going to be, be interesting to see now how tonight pans out as well In terms of the Irish squad like what are you expecting from who Vera's going to pick and put yeah, in? Yeah I think well she said herself I suppose it's going to be as close to the team that um, that starts next mm. or in, in Sydney um, that, that she can so I think um, yeah I, th- I don't think well there's always one surprise or two isn't there I was going to say I don't expect many surprises but I'd be lying so um you know, predict a team, and there there will probably be at least one that that we're not quite expecting. But um, but yeah, I think she's going to go for experience, and um, I think. But I think we will see the um, Sinead and Marissa as well come mm. in. Um, Full home yeah. debuts for them. I think so. Anyways, that's what I, I suppose. Uh, um, Sinead only has one cap as well. She yeah. <laughs> kind of needs another one. It's crazy, really. That <laughs> players, probably, yeah. yeah, the players have never played in a football match in Ireland, and now they're going to represent Ireland. You know, in a World Cup, but um, especially with Sinead, she's probably close enough to the starting team as well yeah. more so than Marissa yeah. could be in there like I wouldn't be all that surprised but Sinead definitely with the, how we lined up against the US yeah I think so and I think she kind of is um, you know by all accounts a really good player so I think I think we'll see her in from the start tonight uh, Is Vera Powell almost going to would you expect her to almost set aside the opposition tonight like is she, is she setting up tonight for Australia or is she setting up tonight for France I think I think she'll be setting up for Australia with them in mind at least I don't think she'll um, kind of zone in necessarily on the individual players of France obviously they will still talk about it in meetings and their strengths and weaknesses and all that but I think the general structure and um, you know whether they were to like if they're to implement some form of I don't know man marking job I don't think that I don't think that's done really nowadays but like uh, you know if someone has to take more um, of the I suppose the, the attention of Sam Kerr maybe they'll do the same with the, the French, stri- French striker this morning or this evening who, who could be Le Sommer. so um, no I think they'll still have have Australia completely I think in their mind yeah what uh, so I guess she's Vera Powell's already said she's going to play her strongest team that she possibly can for tonight's game what team would you like to see oh <laughs> what I'd this like pro- to see versus what the, well yeah does yeah. it differ massively your team versus uh, well I'd have players starting who aren't in the squad but that's right. uh, uh, we, don't, we don't have that option <laughs> I can only pick from the 23 that are there who's now who's not in the squad who's um, not in the squad that you would have had in your 11 uh, Roma McLaughlin um, Jamie Finn to name but two right. yeah I don't know I could probably go on but that's two that spring to mind anyway Roma's um, an interesting one because she wasn't even in the preliminary yeah I squad. think she's quality like even when she played in America as well um, mm-hmm. with her college team um, I actually saw her play live over there um, a couple of times and She's really like such a technical player, I think, as well. I think I don't know. She was overlooked slightly, but again, it could, you know, there could be reasons for that too. Um, yeah. You know, we can't see from the outside how she performed within the camp as well, but um, that's fine for us to say. But yeah, maybe they see different qualities in her as well and that. But um, yeah, I suppose at the back, um, I'd see definitely Louise and Neve um, as two of the back three, and I'd probably think that um, Megan Connolly will probably be switched back there as well yeah and then I'd imagine Heather and Katie um, to make up the back five yeah. and then I think probably well obviously Denise um, will be a definite starter and um, I think she'd put Lily Ag in there beside her uh, toss up between Rouge I think and Lily Ag but I think maybe she might go I'm not sure really because Lily Ag was actually left out of the squad against Zambia but obviously I suppose with the reason that she was definitely yeah. um, definitely going to be to be in I suppose and um, Rish is kind of a weird one because obviously she suffered so much with injuries over the last yeah, couple of months that's and the thing I don't know how she, does she have 90 minutes in yeah. there uh, I'm not sure and like would you know. rather put her on for the last like 20 or something or put her on take her off kind yeah, of early and if that's, she's struggling I suppose that's what they'll see maybe, uh, maybe they will start her and see how she gets on um, and see what's kind of in the tank um, but then yeah I think then she'll, I think she'll start Sinead and I actually think she may start Marissa as well yeah. you know again we haven't seen much much of her but um I, I would probably have Abby Larkin maybe in, um, in there or you know one of the kind of more um, the other attacking players and then I think up front she'll go for Kira Caruso I think mm. um, just I suppose just given how she has the, the history on who she has played I suppose is how but it's kind of interesting because six of them actually of that starting team weren't even in the squad for Zambia so um, it'll be a completely different change to the team How close is Amber Barrett to a start? I don't I, I think that's a really really interesting one because um, it's kind of like actually I think England are facing a similar situation with Russo and Daly you know um, Russo or Amber in our case is so great off the bench that um, and she's made such an impact and it must be very frustrating I, 
I'd imagine for her not to be getting a start because she's done everything what more can she do like come on and score you know um, so yeah I think I think I'd also like to see her given a chance from the start and even yeah. tonight even if it's not fully in her head to do it I think it would be great to see her given the chance and you know just to prove what she can do from the start and like I said we still have plenty of firepower from the bench as well so um, yeah that, that's definitely going to be one of the more interesting positions mm. to see who she goes there who she Slightly off piece from like the Ireland game but you mentioned the Russo daily question and I'm so curious as to what Vigman's going to go for because if you look at the season like Daly is the better player but also yes, for yeah. all the Euros she played in defence and Russo was like yeah. the player yeah. that everyone was calling out for to come off the bench being like why are we starting Ellen White like yeah. start Russo and then Ellen White retired and now all the English fans are like oh no bring back <laughs> Ellen White she was really good she scored us goals yeah, yeah it's, it is an interesting one but yeah like Russo's just impact off the bench is it's hard mm. to ignore too and like when um, you know players legs are tired and stuff like that as well like she does seem to have the the more of an impact but yeah to go it's just such credit to Daly to go from like a starter as generally versatile players may not always be on the, the starting team it's really rare I can't remember a time where someone has started in one tournament played every game um, in defence and then is in line to start um, just the next year in another tournament in a completely different position yeah. having scored yeah like you said 22 goals in 22 games in England and not even for a top team that's the one I suppose if she was like Sam Kerr or that in one of the top teams it's obviously easier to get more more ball yeah. and um, the scoring rate wouldn't be as I suppose impressive but for her she's done so well I, I think I think Daly will start I don't know I think yeah. that's how she's going to go and, I did just yeah. love all the US fans this season whenever WSL fans are like wow Rachel Daly is a really good forward and they're like guys <laughs> you've been sitting on a secret for a couple of years now yeah exactly yeah she'd go yeah club for, obviously yeah for club she's played forward yeah. um, for a long time then I suppose it's similar to Anya as well in our case we have Anya playing um, as a defender now with the national team and um, striker you know for um, sh- for, for over so um, but it's just been adaptable I suppose and, and players at that level can do that a bit farcical from Mantis Janet's perspective that Alessia Russo was allowed ultimately to leave on a free transfer yeah. but like look, she's brilliant as the third summer signing for Arsenal she's only 24 she's had a few good seasons at United as well like how good a signing is that for Arsenal will, will that take them to the next level I, do you think I think so like when you look at the kind of they're just stacked now with talent across the, the front line they've so many options Black Stinius I I'm not sure where she fits in now nearly with, with the options they have but yeah as a Man United fan it wasn't great business I think to see Russo um, go on a free you know um, it just it was an, I think an opportunity lost you know and um, for her I think it's a good move I think she'll um, yeah she, she'll learn a lot there as well I think and I suppose that maybe it's it, it shows, you know, as a United fan, her her leaving. It must have taken a lot, you know, for her to leave, and it might say something about how maybe how the club has been run there. You know that that she found Arsenal a more attractive. Well, I think offer, if you, you know. look at the reporting around it, basically United wanted to keep her, but also didn't offer her great terms on the deal, and then at the very last minute came back into the situation, and we're like master wages at the end. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. she was just like frustrated with how the club had operated up until that point, and yeah. as you say, as some someone who's grown up as a United fan you know it takes a bit for you to leave and for your club to treat you like that it's probably almost worse if you're a fan and I think so yeah because it, you know kind of the emotion side of it wouldn't come into it that much you know mm. anymore but yeah it, I'd say um, yeah it just shows I mean it shows the appeal of Arsenal as well you know I would imagine how they have such a history in the women's game too you know our, um, Man United are really only a new, new force as well so um, yeah I think all eyes would be on Arsenal I think as a team to beat next season there for sure uh, I hope so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fan in the corner here. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah well I, I think we would have won the WSL this year if everyone had stayed fit yeah I mean yeah. their their uh, history record was Very just unlucky crazy oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. ACLs left right and centre yeah just, just popping like all. Oh, constantly um, ahead of the Irish World Cup um, bid I guess maybe we'll call it like what where, where in the on, on the team is your biggest concern like do, we, do you have any gaping concerns in, this, in the squad or the team at the moment yeah nothing like be negative but I mean we should be realistic <laughs> here as well I guess yeah um, I, don't know, I mean I think they've performed so well and they probably know themselves where their weaknesses lie and, the, and you know how they can counteract them and that but um, I thought against Zambia because we pushed on and we tried to attack a lot more than we would against higher ranked teams that maybe our lack of pace at the back was slightly um, exposed um, particularly for the last goal I think but 
I don't think that will be a case, you know, because I would imagine us sitting in, in a low block against mm. um, probably all the teams, slightly less so against Nigeria, maybe. Um, particularly if we have to get something out of that game, I think we'll go a little bit more, um, kind of more attacking slightly. But um, yeah, I mean, we, we usually do sit in and, and try to get set pieces, and that's that's how we're the best, I think, as well. Um, and, you know, any kind of, I suppose, risks we take going forward, they're calculated risks. So it's kind of, they know we always usually have plenty of cover and that. So it would mainly, I think, just on a counter attack from a set piece is where, um, you know, it would be possibly we might be vulnerable, you know. But I think, I think come by the time um, our first game rolls around, I think they'll have that all kind of under, under control, <laughs> hopefully. We will be, you'd imagine, tonight sitting back and defending for a vast majority of those 90 minutes. Like, yeah. that's just realistic. I know we had that unbelievable record of not conceding a goal for for I, don't, I can't remember how long it was but it was an incredible run of games um, and then obviously the couple of games in America and then the Zambia game uh, the Zambia game you can probably discount a lot of changes to the team yeah. probably nerves pre-squad announcement as well that sort of thing but if, if, they, if they can just refine that that era where they weren't conceding goals whatsoever that'd be kind of nice <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't <laughs> definitely be kind of nice um, Is Nils be enough to get us through the group I don't know I know I was uh, doing those permutations didn't I think Portugal in the men's side I think maybe have yeah, qualified without before. winning a game yeah so um, yeah I mean if we don't concede we'll probably you're right if we don't concede we'll probably qualify um, to <laughs> the next uh, round so yeah it's not not too bad I suppose the permutation but yeah I think that's it it's, that's the most important thing is just to be really really hard to break down and not to give up any easy goals you know make whatever team if they are to score to work hard for it and um, yeah like you said we probably wouldn't be a team renowned for scoring a lot of goals so I think obviously we need to limit limit the amount of chances and the goals we give up and then hopefully like I said even you know a counter attack like um, that night in Hamden or, or that you know I think we are well capable of, of counter attacking but um, I think it needs to be done yeah at speed is, is the main thing really um, because it's it's hard though when you're defending for such long periods in a game to then want to just go when you get the ball the kind of usual reaction is to just relax mm-hmm. and take a breather for a minute but um, in our case I think we need to once we win it then try to see if the early ball is on um, obviously if it's not then we can try to control it a little bit but it's kind of the frustrating thing with not having Mannion in the squad because she probably gave us the option of playing out from the back a little bit more and doing so with like pace whereas we don't really have that option unless it's yeah. like yeah, I Katie and it. Heather coming up the wings but even still you probably don't want them pulled out of position too yeah. much maybe more a little more if Megan Connolly is back there you know yeah. I suppose um, f- f- given her that she's played in midfield as well maybe there might be a bit more kind of of that to be seen but you're right Eva definitely showed that when she was in and I think you could see a, a kind of a few long balls going astray particularly earlier on in the mm. Sunday game um, they just kind of seemed to not have many ideas but I think again like that law be dissected into mm. Mm-hmm. Um, into pieces well, it just reminded me of how we down. were playing like maybe six or seven months ago when we still were so dependent on just hoofing the ball up to Heather when she was playing up front oh, and that was, yeah. <laughs> how, difficult watch, how yeah. often did we like after game say god she's she's great at running because all she did was like run and run and run yeah, for games and like, to like, chase balls down or like chase players down but in terms of the actual options to scoring very rarely was there actually one problem properly on that's the thing and I was recently talking obviously Heather um, played with Salt 11 where I grew up playing as well and I was talking to someone uh, in the club recently and we just said how frustrating it was for us to watch her up front given that we'd seen her has been so incredible on the wing all throughout her career her um, club career with Salt Hill and that so um, it's, she it's seems just, quite happy like I was chatting yeah. to her last week about it and I was like you know how are you finding the switch for the national team and she's like it's way more comfortable yeah you can me. just see like she's just so comfortable there She obviously she's a workhorse course anyway and she did uh, like a, um, as good a job as possible up front and but she was just chasing down aimless balls a lot but now you can just see her she's uh, really kind of coming into her own you can see her kind of she almost glides with the ball like at her feet it's you know it, it, it doesn't really even sometimes the way she runs it you wouldn't even know she has a ball with her because it's that kind of um, effortless I suppose but yeah it is it's great to see her there finally and um, yeah I mean I think Carusa or, or Amber Barrett is, is a great option up front as well so um, I don't think you know I think it it'll only benefit the team Cruz is quite an underrated player I think because she hasn't played in leagues that people watch all that often yeah, that's true. people are almost like slightly surprised even though she had quite a good goal scoring record at her club and yeah. you know 
again like you were saying about Heather it has always puzzled me who we've played up front when we do actually have players that naturally play in that position whether it's like Carusa or even the likes of Leanne Kiernan I'm not sh- I know she's not in this squad but yeah. she's always been there Amber Barrett there are quite a few options that we could have had that's the thing and Carusa I suppose gives the option of kind of a holder player as well mm. so um, it does it does really I suppose depend on how, how we're going to play and I suppose unfortunately maybe from Amber's point of view is that we're going to be playing like um, tougher teams where we're not going to maybe have as many chances to run over the top we're just going to try to look for that out ball and try to relieve the pressure a bit more but but yeah I, I still go back to what we were saying earlier I would love love to see um, Amber given a chance from the start tonight but um, you know I suppose it remains to be seen whether we'll see that or not Some of the players that we haven't even mentioned in the 23 uh, person squad like that I mean Vera doesn't exactly go beyond many of the, of the players in terms of subs like you, you're probably thinking 16, 17 of that oh, 23 will ultimately maximum, play maximum I'd say maximum. yeah because even if you look at a record in competitive games it's generally one or two subs um, like in in friendlies a little bit more but or yeah more but um, in the last few games it's like it's yeah usually up to two would be probably mm-hmm. now you might see more in a tournament situation but I'd, I still don't think so because even I think the first game before their um, second game against Canada that they have an extra day's rest in Canada as well so mm-hmm. I think it's because the yeah. team is travelling so much yeah. they have an yeah. extra exactly day that five hour trek game. it's not like a, it's not going Galway to Dublin now in no. fairness uh, Sydney to Perth is a little bit longer um, exactly. so yeah I think yeah like I said there, there's so many players who won't see the, the field like over Stuff there the list like yeah. in the defenders Izzy Atkinson uh, Clara Reardon possibly even midfielders Kira Grant um, Lucy Quinn like th- these players of course could well play and could, could play, have some involvement in the World Cup but they're, they're probably borderline uh, yeah. as to even make an appearance and that's why I think it was interesting even given that Aoife Mannion say for example was left out like like we're saying there the reality is five or six players won't play over there so you kind of nearly can take a risk could have taken a risk almost on those um, players but um, same I mean when England England won the, the Euros last year you didn't see much variation from um, their starting team and, and the subs who came on either so I think once the team is set even I think tonight is going to be uh, really really um, interesting because I think that it's going to be those 11 players that play tonight will will definitely feature you know in the world um, well hopefully will definitely feature in the World Cup um, but yeah I can't see any more than like 14, 15 yeah right. it's, it's funny how stressed yeah. we were over the 23 and who was going to get paid <laughs> that's what I yeah well, it was like the day before the squad was announced and I felt so like tense and nervous and then I was talking to someone about there like I think like, <laughs> realistically you're not actually going to see half of these players yeah. anyways yeah and that's why even I, I was talking to, to someone about it when we were predicting our um, our teams over and back and I had actually said I, I don't see Jamie Finbin in the squad and she was like no no she's going to start and I was like no I think she should start but yeah. um, but, I, but um, I was saying that I think it would have been great to see some of the younger players I think um, you know the likes of Aaron McLaughlin and Tara to be maybe have been and just thrown in the mix there and and like we said there the, the chances are they probably wouldn't have got to the pitch but can mm. you imagine the experience mm. they'd have oh. trying to qualify then you know and yeah. bring that with them throughout the I thought it was interesting Vera career. saying that Tara probably would have been in the squad if Izzy Atkinson hadn't have played so well that's true like and that's it's, how tight yeah, the margins are and it's very unfortunate I think she had her PE leave and search exam the next oh. day as well so she was like she did well to juggle all that yeah. you know and I know she definitely has a bright future ahead but it would would have been such great experience t- for them to have experienced a tournament in a situation and you know what? But anyway, that's it's the squad she chose at the end of the day, I suppose. Yeah. Before we let you go, Maeve, score prediction. How do you see tonight going? Oh, it's a tricky one. Uh, head or heart is always yeah. the, the question here. Uh, nil, nil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, I think a nil nil would be great. Um, yeah, I think I think I've got to go for a draw. Um, I'll, yeah, I mean. Yeah, so it's probably is a little bit more the head here but, or the heart I mean but uh, I'll go for a one all draw let's see how that works out we'll take it we'll take it <laughs> definitely uh, take that <laughs> yeah. Amber Barrett goal off the bench again yeah yeah um, great stuff Maeve thanks for coming in thanks as, a lot as usual great to have you in the studio Maeve de Burke there the former Irish international